What's up guys? So today I'm going to talk to you about how I plant my trees. I am by no means an expert, but in the past three years I've planted about 17 trees and I have lost only one of those. The one I lost was a pawpaw and those are kind of an understory tree anyways. They kind of like to be in forested areas. Um, they will produce more fruit when they have full sun, but when you see them in the wild, a lot of times they'll be on riverbanks and they may have a half day of sun at the most, kind of on the edge there. A lot of times you'll see them in the understory of the forest. So that's the only tree I've ever lost doing this method. So basically what I've been doing is digging a way oversized hole. Generally with a backhoe, I've only done a few by hand because we have extremely rocky soil around here. Um, if you've never dug a hole in the Ozarks, it's quite an experience. Uh, for those of you that have, you totally know what I'm talking about. So uh, we'll dig a big oversized hole, and then I'll get wood, rotten wood, bark, sometimes wood chips, just whatever I can find. I'll use kind of a combination of rotten and fresh wood to go in the hole. I'll probably put average about three sticks about that big in and then I'll kind of cover those with soil and a lot of times I'll try to get if I have long enough roots I'll kind of lay a root right along the uh, most rotten piece so the wood the rotten wood immediately acts as a sponge as soon as it gets wet when it's buried like that it will get wet and it'll stay wet for well forever pretty much and then it'll begin breaking down, the worms will start eating it. The fresher wood will take longer to break down, but it'll continue to feed the tree over many, many, many years. I got this idea from Sepp Holzer, who makes his world-famous fugaculture beds, which are basically long piles of wood, generally on contour and then covered with dirt. As the wood rots, it just continues to feed everything that's on top of that mound. So this is basically just a another take on that idea. One other thing is I generally try to plant most of my trees in the fall. It's actually kind of hard to find trees in the fall, especially locally, so I'm generally ordering online. But the local big box stores and the local hardware stores generally don't have any fruit trees in the fall, which is kind of a shame because the roots really can get pretty established if you put a tree in the ground in September, October time period. They have several months uh, before it gets really cold out and they can kind of get established during that time. And, th and then again in early spring in the February, March kind of time period, they'll continue to grow. So what generally happens to our new trees that die is we get a lot of dry weather in July and August. So if you're planting a tree in May, it only has a month maybe to get its roots established before that dry weather hits. So then you gotta water it but not water it too much that you root bound it in the hole. So um, I've had a lot of luck planting stuff in the fall. So I would say about 75% of everything I've planted is in the fall. That said, I've planted about 10 more trees this spring just because uh, the swale is done and we're not gonna be bringing any more machines down here. I finally had more space to plant trees. I wanted to get as many in as I could this spring. I've never watered a tree more than one time so as soon as I put it in the ground I'll water it if it's not gonna rain for a while and that's it we've been pretty fortunate the past few to not have any major droughts I've been fortunate on that front but I also like to con a little bit of that to the way I'm planting the trees with the big holes the oversized hole and the, all the wood that I put in there one other thing that I always do is I mulch them really 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 well I usually try to do the drip line at minimum a tree that doesn't have any branches like a lot of times you'll get when you order something online they'll trim all the branches off so all you have is just one main leader I usually try for uh, 18 inches two feet something like that to keep it mulched around um, that's that usually more than covers our hole I never use cardboard underneath a tree when I first plant it cardboard does break down over time but it also blocks water for a time too and the water will kind of go through the mulch, hit that cardboard, and run off. So um, I don't like to put cardboard underneath my freshly planted. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of show you some of the trees we planted this spring and also some of the trees that have been in the ground for, I guess this will be their third year. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. All right, here's an example of one of the holes that we dug for a tree. Basically, oversized to dig the hole. I had them put all the dirt back in the hole 
because I wasn't quite ready to plant. This is also going to be a, uh, a peach tree that I got to go from a pit from a peach that I ate. I'll probably end up grafting it, but um, I don't need a very big hole for that. Um, and this is kind of an example of the wood that we put in there. So we've got some, some pretty rotten stuff here. Um, that'll soak moisture up real good and hold it for a long time. And then we've also got like this, this piece here. Um, it's pretty fresh. You get a, get a good mix of stuff breaking down pretty quick and then stuff that's going to take a little while longer. So, so the worms will sit there and work on that and help feed the tree while it's small. And by the time it's big, it should be good on its own. All right, this is kind of what the trees look like after we get them planted. Um, this one we've just got mulched with leaves for now. We've got some wood chips and bark that we'll be adding to that fairly shortly. We're getting pretty consistent rainfall so it's not that big of a deal to, to leave it unmulched right now. The main reason behind that is to keep the grass back and keep the moisture locked into the soil so it can get through its first couple of years. Anyways, uh, this is a Cornelian cherry. Never grown this one before. See if I can get that to focus. Um, but pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about this. It's related to dogwoods, uh, makes a little sour cherry from what I've been told. And, um, we have dogwoods all over the forest around here, native, so I'm hoping this will do very well. The ducks got their, uh, first little jaunt in the pond today, and now they're venturing out. I guess they're thinking about going back up, back up to where they live. All right, this is the end result. Uh, this tree has been here for about three years or so. And you can see we just got all kinds of stuff in here for mulch. This is some leaves and some grass clippings. And if you dig down, there's some sawdust down there. And, you know, just whatever we can find, whatever we can get our hands on. That's mulch for our trees. All right, if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. If you have any questions, comment down below. Also, please subscribe so you can keep up with what we're doing. She's been in here with these bees for however many days, five days. So they're pretty attracted to her at this point, so they're probably how, going to stay with her. How do you